Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, hello, hello. Many thanks for clicking on my uh, thumbnail and choosing to watch my content. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, as you can see from the title, we're now into part three of doing our Entering the World of Kit Modeling series as we're using the Airfix starter set with the uh, Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A as the subject. Uh, for those of you that missed the last video, I'll put a link to it up there so you can go and watch it and then you'll caught up with the rest of us. Okay, so for those of you that did watch the last one, as you can remember, uh, we'd left it, that we'd uh, made all the cockpit interior up and we'd left that to dry overnight for 24 hours. So now, as you can see, that is all nice and dry. There's no issues there. And we also did the propeller as well. So there we go, that's those all made up. So now we're going to start today's uh, episode by saying that we're going to be putting some paint onto plastic. Now that is because when we do get to section three, we're going to have to glue two fuselage halves together with the cockpit detail inside. And you're not going to be able to paint that after you've done that, so I've got to do that before. And if you look at the instructions there, we can see for the most part, there is a paint call out for number 33, which I think is that, um, sorry, is that 30? Oh, sorry, number 30. Yeah, even I'm getting mixed up, which is that greeny color. There we go. So for the most part of there, most of that, is going to be painted in the green colour. There are going to be a few little bits on it uh, that we'll be painting in 30, which is the black. Uh, but for now, we're just getting this um, base coat down. So uh, we're going to uh, just be using uh, paint number 30. So as you can see, the paint that comes is this little pot here called acrylic paint. Now this is a water-based paint, non-toxic. So uh, even though you don't want the your little tots getting hold of this stuff, you can rest assured it's not toxic, even if they, if they do get hold of it. So you know, where is there? So, okay. So what you need to do before you do anything with this paint, and really hard to get into, is to give it a good stir because this will have settled inside. So everything needs to be a nice, get that to a good stir like this. So there we go. Double check in, 33, 32. yep, so there we go. So that's the paint all stirred because like I say, it would have separated in the, in the tub. Now, what you don't want to be doing is going straight into the paint and onto that because it, it is a little bit, a little bit too thick and you want to be able to uh, paint without getting streaks or anything. So using the little plastic container thing that it came in. As you can see, I'm just putting four or five dobs of the paint in there. Then we use just a dab of water. This will thin down the paint, which will make it a lot easier 
to work with, excuse me, a bit of a runny nose. So here we go, start off and we'll start to paint all the interior section. Here we go. Now the trick is that what you need to do is several thin coats. You don't want to try and attempt to paint all this in one big thick blob because that way you're going to be getting a lot of streaks on your paint. Excuse me. And also you can sort of wipe out a lot of the small fine detail on your model as well and you don't want that. So here we go. Now what you will notice when you're doing your very 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 first coat is how awful it looks. Now don't worry about that. This is acting as a primer coat. See, it's not looking not looking great, is it? That paint, as you can see. But like I say, it's your primer coat. So more paint in here. Dash of water. There we go. And as I was saying, your first coat always looks a bit rough and ready. But don't worry about that because your next coat and the coat after that will cover up all your sins. There we go. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit. Take your time, there's no, no rushing. Just make sure you try and get an even a coat as possibly you can. Right, I'm going to put my hands down because I'm shaking all over here. Now I know it says on the instructions that your chair is cushion is painted a different colour. You don't worry about that because that colour will go over this green base coat that we're doing here. So, here we go. No worries about that. So, I say, just take your time. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies, all the grey plastic is being covered. There we go. It's always better to have not enough paint out of the pot than too much because that way you're not going to be, be wasting it. So there we go. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> As I said before, don't worry that it looks a bit patchy and a bit wishy-washy because this is only your first coat. Now there's also, the fact is that there's a lot of detail on this section of the model that when it comes to uh, gluing the fuse large halves together and, and everything that you're not going to see it. But you will know in yourself that you've done it. So. There we go. 
I say. Don't panic too much if you think this paint isn't going on how you want it to be. It doesn't look even because this is your first coat. This will act. This will act like a primer. This is your first coat. So get. Oops, sorry, get into this bottom bit there. So we'll have to go around the back. That may have got everything. Yep. Okay. So there we go. So that is the first coat. So like I said, don't panic that it looks streaky and rough because this is only the first coat that is in there just pop that there I think there we go The rule of thumb is just to get as even as you can. Oh, there's that bit in there I've missed. Oops. There we go. Got that bit. There we go. So, that there, that is your first coat. Now, yes, it's like I said, it's patchy streaks in it but don't worry about that because that is just your first coat when we come to do the second coat that will cover up the majority of these bits that you can't you think you've missed first time round uh, let's do the back of that headrest there a bit more don't think we're going to see that but still Paint it just in case you do. Right, so there we go. So you put that away now to dry for about 20 minutes and it becomes touch dry. Now what I'd do, I'd probably leave it a bit longer than that. Uh, I'd leave it for an hour. Uh, because you don't want to be taking it because it's touch dry that means the surface is dry but underneath it's still wet so if you go in with another wet layer on that you're on the risk of uh, moving about the uh, paintwork that you've already done now what I suggest is while that's drying you look through your instructions see if there's anything else that needs painting the colour you've just used well, this is 30 so that means the inside of the cockpit can be done and also see these the floor on the bottom half of the wings as well as part of the inside the wings there so you've got your paint paints out so we might as well get that done so if we look at that you don't have to paint the whole with the inside of the fuselage just enough to where you can see so again let's get this paint into this little, uh, little palette thing there just a touch of water just get it moving a bit more paint there there we go so if we look at the instructions 
I'll tell you this was about halfway down the oops, halfway down the back there and sort of halfway from there so where I'd go I'd go from that part to that part there so everything between those two lines you can now paint like I said before it's thin coats so this first coat let me just see now this paint seems to be very watery already uh, look. at the end of the day what we're doing here is getting used to painting it now I must say this paint is pretty rubbish it is actually pretty bad and it's really wishy-washy this one but when that's all you've got you do the best with what you've got don't you so as you can see I'm just doing the inside of the cockpit if you can just use the strokes all in the same direction So as I say, this is this is your first coat. This is your your base coat. It is going to look rough. It's got, got you know. Don't panic too much. Just make sure if you can, all your brush strokes go the same direction. Gather in there, so just try and get that out. So So there we go. That is that interior painted there now. Like I said, it is a, your only your first coat, so don't panic about it. Don't panic and think, God, that looks awful. Yes, it does look awful, but when we come to put the second and the third coat on um then it is going to cover that up so don't don't panic about it uh of course after you've done all the paint call outs with the 30 then if you look at the, the propeller which is black which is done in the 33 you can do that same way as uh, we've just done this uh, you do first coat put it to one side for an hour come back and do a second thin coat and a third coat if necessary so right what I'm going to do I'm going to go away now um, I'm going to carry on painting these get all the little bits that need painting now painted and done and then we can show you the results okay so there we go um, it has taken four coats of paint to get a close to decent uh, coverage on this uh, I have heard in the past uh, better modelers than me saying these pots of paint that when you get them throw them in the bin because they're rubbish and I thought well they can't, they can't be that bad it's air fix but uh, sad to say they aren't the best paints but having said that this is a starter set this is for people who've never made a model before it just gives you that, uh, that starter point to, uh, you know, fitting your model together and painting it. So 
Um, what I am going to say is when you do do this for yourself, it's your first ever kit. You know, don't look at somebody who's been modeling for 40 years and then look at yours and think, well, why, why doesn't mine look like that? Uh, you're going to uh, you know, get, get the best out, out of it as you can. So, as I said, um, it took four coats to get to that standard. And like I say, for me, I have been modeling for quite a while and it took me a job to get that, that kind of coverage. Um, not looking forward to doing the uh, upper surfaces now with these paints, but uh, we'll give it a go, see uh, what we can come up with, can't we? But like I say, they're all painted now. That's the inside cockpit painted. There we go. Uh, what we need to do now is just set them to one side. Again, for 24 hours, that gives time for the paint to set dry fully because even though, like I say, it is touch dry on the surface, underneath, it is still wet. So you have to give it time for the paint to dry. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so next time when we come back, we'll be going on to doing this little decal here. So we will be learning how to put the decals on. And then when we've done that, we can move on to fitting the two fuselage hearts together and moving on with the build from there. So, uh, oh, just another a little thing as well. Uh, this brush, this half decent brush actually, I, I would have preferred to have had two brushes, one this size and probably one the size up because this is going to uh, take a hell of a job to paint the body on the, pa the uh, aircraft with this one. Uh, when you do wash it out, uh, remove as much of the paint as you can from the brush on some tissue. Then run, rinse it under the tap and use some uh, fairy liquid or wash soap, something like that, to clean out the rest of the paint. And then when all the paint's gone, give it a final rinse in cold water. This is all with cold water, don't use warm water, but all with cold water. And then you can reform the tip and then you put it back in this little plastic sleeve there and it will keep it protected and it will keep the point as well. So there we go. And uh, right, so we will set this all to one side uh, for 24 hours and then we can uh, proceed on with the build after that. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel. It'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell. Also, if you've got Facebook, you can follow me at Adrian Bauer Project. And if you've got a Twitter account, you can follow me at Project Bauer. So, with all that in mind, I'd like to thank you all again for watching, and it's to see you all again on the next episode of The Adrian Bauer Project. Thank you.